Muckle Chapter 10 is on food getting and economics. Um, <clears throat> basically, what we're doing here is we're talking about hunter-gatherers and tribal people and chiefdoms and states, agricultural states, uh, you know, from 5,000 years ago all the way up until, you know, medieval or early modern France or Germany. And then we're talking about in the rise of industrial industrial society in the 19th century. And then we're talking about how you live today, uh, which is still all about getting food, but it's very, very different. So we're going to, we're going to cover a lot of ground uh, very quickly. We'll skip over some stuff. Uh, it'll all make sense in the end uh, once we do the politics. But the economics and the politics have to be separated methodologically, even though they're all mixed in together. Um, how we relate to each other and how we make a living uh, are very closely connected, as we know, uh, going through this. In any case, food getting and economics, how goods and services are produced, distributed, and consumed. Uh, we do this with our technological toolkit, as we know. Uh, the way we get food um, varies according to our technology, uh, whether it's stone tools uh, or working from home. Um, we all have different tools, skills, and knowledge used by people to survive. Um, um, hopefully, you've been able to recognize as we have gone uh, online uh, that some of us are able to work from home and some of us are, are, are unable to work from home. Uh, and this really, uh, this really makes a difference. Do you do your work um, uh, face to face? I mean, I, can, I, I have a 10 year old and a 13 year old, and it's rough. It's rough for the teachers to teach them. But can you imagine trying to teach second graders from home? Goodness, very, very different. Um, <clears throat> in any case, these are the tools, skills, and knowledge used by people to survive. We're all trying to survive uh, making a, a, an income, hopefully. And if you, uh, if you have uh, uh, had, had troubles with that recently, uh, I, I don't wish to make light of it. Um, it's, a, it's a rough time. Uh, and those of us who are still receiving incomes are counting ourselves very, very lucky. Adaptive strategies. Uh, we have food foragers, uh, hunter-gatherers. Uh, these are the people who hunter gather all their food. There's no food production. Um, then we have the food producers uh, who are uh, transform their environment to produce their own food. 99% uh, of human existence was spent foraging from 300, 400,000 years ago up until uh, 5, 10, 000, 10 to 15,000 years ago. Um, so, you know, we could say maybe at least 285,000 years of uh, foraging, uh, and then the very, very first uh, farmers, uh, they were the only ones doing it on a planet that was still 99% foragers, and even uh, even a, a hundred or 200 years ago, there were still plenty of foragers around. Um, <clears throat> and even today, there's, there's, you know, maybe, I don't know, 20, 30,000 people out there uh, who are foraging. Um, although they are main, mainly in deserts and rainforests, and Arctic regions. Uh, food producers uh, come along in the last 15,000 years. They produce some or all of their food. Even today, uh, I have people that I know uh, who hunt uh, for most of their meat. They, they go out and they, they kill whatever is in season, and that's what they eat for their meat. Um, and they don't really don't, don't buy much in the way of, of cow meat. Uh, food foragers, uh, we have forager foodways. Gathering is more important than hunting for the most part, and a great variety of foods are available. Uh, there's social organization. Uh, we're getting into politics here a little bit because politics is closely rela related to economics. So foraging bands, the band is the, the political designation. These are small groups, usually less than 50 people. They're all related in some way. Uh, there's social density. Uh, their frequent, uh, the, the social density refers to the frequency and intensity of interactions among group members. Uh, and so uh, they are all uh, living very closely. You know, everyone in your band, that's all the people that you're politically related to, and that's no more than 50. So you know everyone, you're related to everyone. Honestly, either you married in or you were born into this group. Um, the sexual division of labor, men tend to do more hunting and women can tend to do more gathering in these uh, many of these societies. Uh, hunting is high, high prestige, high risk, larger take, rarer taking. So it's very prestigious to hunt. Um, it's a risky thing. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't always bear out. You could go hunting five days in a row and get nothing, or maybe a turtle uh, during those five days. 
Um, <clears throat> it's also risky in that you could get killed doing it. Uh, you could get gored by a rhinoceros or something. Uh, the takes are larger. If you fell a wildebeest, you're never going to eat it. You, you know, you and your 15 people, it's going to rot and get stolen by the lions long before uh, you, you get it all eaten. Uh, and it's uh, uh, rare taking. So, you, you, like I said, you, uh, uh, there's a risk of, of failure. Um, and it doesn't happen very often. Gathering, in contrast, is low prestige, low risk, smaller take, frequent takings. Uh, it's not very um, exciting to go out every day, out to that, you know, walk a mile to the tree with the nuts, pick up the nuts, put them in the bag, walk home again. Um, that's, that's not exciting. It's low risk. Uh, you're not going to get hurt doing it unless somebody attacks you, uh, you know, an animal attacks you. But if it's close to home, uh, the animals are going to keep away. Um, and there's low risk of failure. You know, maybe there's no nuts there, but the nuts are, are you know, a, 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 another quarter mile on. Um, smaller take. Uh, you only can, can, can bring home what you can carry. Uh, and, you know, there's not like, uh, you know, uh, 600 pounds of beast that you leave behind taking your your 20 pounds and walking with it um and the takings are, are frequent you just do it every single day and you always get nuts because the nuts are always there um <clears throat> it is egalitarian every member has equal access to the resources uh anyone uh, uh who lives in that band has a right to fill their belly as full as anyone else's so you know if there's only 10 nuts and there's 10 people, everyone gets a nut. Uh, and if there's 20 people, everyone gets half a nut. Um, there's no uh, 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 preferential uh, 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 shares for, for anyone else, for one person and not the other. Lack of specialization. Everyone can do all the jobs, which is still highly demanding and difficult. Everyone can sew. Everyone can uh, uh, make uh, uh, tools. Everyone can dig a hole. Everyone can build the the shelter uh, everyone can do all the jobs and it's in a cooperative society so sharing is a key strategy for survival everyone is dependent on everyone else um, and uh, everyone helps out uh, except for the kids kids uh, kids pretty much are, are free to do whatever they feel like uh, but among adults um, um, uh, 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 adults all um, all take an active role in making sure everyone's safe uh, foragers tend to be nomadic. They tend to move frequently. Uh, we've already talked about this. Economic resources. There are basically uh, three basic economic processes that we're talking about in this textbook, in this chapter. Uh, reciprocity, um, redistribution, and market exchange. Uh, so reciprocity, there are social ru rules that govern sharing food and other items. Uh, when we have food, uh, in these band and tribal societies, um, everybody always has to uh, uh, pay close attention to making sure that all the food is distributed equally um, and that uh, uh, other stuff that you uh, trade back and forth uh, is done uh, with a great deal of care and concern because keeping the group together is, is, is key. Remember uh, what we have? Um, lack of specialization everyone can do all the jobs so there's there's really no pressure to keep people together um in in modern society with high specialization you don't want to get rid of the dude who knows how to work the sewage treatment plant because if you do then it'll fail uh so some people are, are really really key you don't want to make sure uh, you, you don't want to uh, you want to make sure you always have a doctor in town you always have a, a dentist in town etc um, but when there's a low specialization um, and everyone can do all the jobs, then people are just free to, to leave um, and they, they can't, uh, you can't force anyone to stay. So the reason uh, societies stay together is because they're nice. Uh, people are nice to each other uh, and, and, and care uh, uh, and, and take care of each other. Um, so uh, reciprocity redistribution, this is social rules and societies with central governing authorities. Uh, when people are just working it out among themselves, it's reciprocity. When a central government, a chiefdom, uh, or a king or something like that, a chief or a king uh, is taking stuff in and then redistributing it, that is, uh, that is how uh, uh, societies work. Um, we always have central governing authorities when we have states, even when we have market exchange in place. 
these are the social rules in societies with large surpluses due to intensive agriculture or industrial production where you have huge uh, quantities of stuff being produced and it has to go in ways that a central uh, you know the, the Soviet the Soviet uh, Union couldn't really organize it uh, very efficiently because um, it has to be millions of different decisions being made uh, distributed around among millions of different uh, uh, suppliers um, and uh, uh, purchasers and uh, it's just it's it's too much to centrally control it so we use market exchange for that where supply and demand is uh, just you know meeting meeting uh, uh, needs left and right however the state is still redistributing it. Uh, because you still uh, in market uh, market economies you still have tremendous inequality and uh, they would be very unstable if the state wasn't um, trying to make sure that there was some sort of equality there or at least a, a gesture toward it goodness all the way up to 11 minutes okay we'll come back for uh, for re reciprocity here <clears throat>